Now that we have a basic widget configured, let's look at adding some additional features to it. What I want to do is go and add a news feed to the Flex widget. And to do that, I go into the Flex widget, you'll notice it at the top, and I go into news feed, and I decide to display a news feed. There are different types of news providers available in the professional version, specifically RSS, which is the standard version, and then we have Feedly and Facebook providers as well. I'll stick to a normal RSS provider for the time being. So once you've got your provider type selected, you would select the source that you want to look at. You can either select from the list of sources or you can search for a particular source. I'm going to search for CNET. You'll notice that the list shows up and I'm going to look at their blogs feed. So you'll know user defined blog at the top and select yes to display that. There are different settings you can configure for news feeds, specifically uh, the update interval, how often it updates, rotation interval, which is how fast it rotates on the screen once it shows you items. And then whether you want to show the icon, unread articles should be highlighted, whether you want to hide viewed articles, so once you read them, they disappear, uh, using the internal viewer or the external viewer or an, some form of an external viewer, and font colors. So in our case, we're done. And I just want to go back. And now you will see at the top, just above the calendar, the news uh, feed rotating inside the, uh, the widget. It rotates, it'll take you from article to article to article. You can tap on a particular article to read that specific article. Or you could tap on the icon to take you to the article viewer, where you can scroll through and read individual articles. Tapping on the article takes you to the viewer, and you can swipe left to right to read previous and next articles if you want to read all your articles this way. Going back to the list, I've set it to not show red art items to hide them, so you'll notice that they sort of disappear from the list. And you can do your reading of your news articles. If you want to mark everything red, you just press the mark as red button at the top. Refresh. We'll see if there are any additional items to show. So that's the basics of the news widget inside the Flex widget. Now I'm going to add a standalone news widget with RSS. To do that, I'm going to go into my widget settings and add a Cronus News widget to one of my screens. I'm going to pick the screen here. For the time being, I'm going to set it to the normal RSS uh, CNET blog. I'm not going to change any of the settings. I'll say hide the viewed items, but the rest of it I'll leave the same. And uh, just for the fun of it, I'm going to give it a background. Uh, semi-transparent gray background. Let me just resize this and there I have a full screen standalone news widget. Uh, tapping on the items takes you to the individual screens, uh, individual items, and you have the news widget uh, to use. I'm now going to change the widget to have a Feedly provider. To do that, I go back into Corona settings for the widget, and in the news feed section, I choose a different provider type. In this case, I'm going to pick Feedly. You'll notice that the Feedly settings now become available. I've already signed in on this device uh, to Feedly, so I don't need to log in again. But if you are uh, a new user, you'll be asked to assign your Feedly account to your device, and then you can change various settings where the thumbnails are visible, and which categories from your Feedly account to display. Once you've done this, going back to the widget, you'll notice that it's currently loading items. It shows the Feedly icon in the top. And once it's gone and loaded all the various items, it shows you Feedly as part of the news viewer. I've turned thumbnails on so you can see them, uh, and clicking on the item takes you to this specific article on Feedly. The exact same thing can be done for Facebook. In my case, I've set the provider up to be Facebook, and you'll notice very similar 
uh, view as a Facebook widget. So we support standard RSS, Feedly, and Facebook as part of the news providers. Another thing I want to show is how to change our standard calendar to be the new month view calendar as well. So you'll notice here on the screen I have a um, full-size calendar. This is the standalone calendar widget set to be the normal view or the standard view. What I want to do is go into Corona settings for that calendar. So I'm going to pick it. And then in the calendar events viewer, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to change the calendar style to be the month view style. So if I go out at this point and look at that calendar, you'll notice now it is showing me the month view um, and I can switch from month to month. I can also go and make this calendar a little bit more uh, advanced in terms of its features. So what I'm going to do is go back into this calendar and I'm going to change the tap action. So what you'll notice right now is when you tap on the system calendar, it's going to, when you tap on the calendar icon, it's going to open up the system calendar. If I go in and I change that to be the toggling of the month and the list view, what will happen now is as I toggle on the icon, it switches between the month and the list view. There's nothing in the view right now, um, but uh, that will switch between the different views. Another feature I want to show is how to highlight items in the calendar. So you'll notice right now the little white dots that show you days with events. So if I click on each one of these, it'll show me there's a particular event on that day. I want to change the colors of these. So if I go back into the calendar and I say I want to, well, two things I want to do. Firstly, I want to um, <clears throat> Turn on calendar colors. So if I have different calendars with events, I want to always show those calendar colors so I know which calendar, uh, which event comes from. And I also want to highlight upcoming events. And in this case, I'm going to pick, I don't know, light orange and dark orange. And the reason for this is twofold. Firstly, if you do this and you look at your list view, you'll notice that upcoming events for the next day is highlighted in your calendar. But this it will also apply to the month view calendar in terms of highlighting the current date. So if you look at month view, now you'll notice the little purple dots show uh, which calendar those events are from. So the event on the 11th, for example, is from the calendar with the blue color. And you'll notice the 20th day's date is highlighted in the orange color bolded. So that applies to the list view as well. Looking at the list view, you'll see that I now have the calendar indicator next to the events. There are no upcoming events, no events in the next 24 hours, so nothing is highlighted at this point in time. Uh, but should anything show up, it will show up in the orange color. Next, I want to show the use of notifications. And you do that um, by setting a notification for the weather widgets, um, depending on what weather widgets, uh, what weather information you want to show. Right now, there are no weather notifications. What I want to do is set up a weather notification to show for my Flex widget. A key point to remember is that notifications are set per widget. So every widget can have its own notification. The reason for this design choice is that if you have multiple locations set, a widget with different widgets showing the weather for different locations, you can trigger notifications for each one of those different locations. You only need to set the notifications on one widget, though, if you only want it for one particular location. Even though you can set it on every widget, only one widget needs to be configured to show the notification. So um, to show a weather notification, I go into the weather panel and you'll notice the notification section is right at the bottom. And there are already three options here. One is to show the notification with just the current conditions. That's a standard notification. Uh, when it triggers, it triggers only after an automatic update in the background. It's not always visible and it only shows 
uh, if there are changes to the weather. So you won't see it right away, but it'll show up uh, depending on your uh, refresh update interval that's set at the top. The second item is to include the forecast, and this includes a second row in the widget. It becomes, sorry, in the notification. It becomes an expandable notification that includes the five-day forecast data. So if you select that, uh, you'll be able to see the five-day forecast data. Remember, though, that forecast data is not available for AccuWeather. So if you have AccuWeather selected as your weather source, you will not be able to select that item. And then lastly is the option to make the notification persistent. A persistent notification cannot be swiped away. It will always show in the notification bar. And in this particular case, if on Cronus you make it persistent, it will show up immediately. So uh, once you do a refresh, you'll see the notification right away. You cannot dismiss it. It'll stay uh, in your notification bar um, until you uh, delete the widget. Uh, and it will update every time uh, there's an update in the background as well. So what I've done now is I've turned them on, included the forecast, and made it persistent. So firstly, um, notice there's no notification. But if I do a refresh, of the weather, you should see a notification show up. There's a notification, and it's right now in a collapsed mode because there's more than one notification on the screen. The way Android works is if you have multiple locations, uh, expandable notifications show as collapsed by default, but you can always just drag it open to show you the forecast information or slide it closed if it's taking up too much space. So drag it open with a single finger slide it closed with double, uh, two fingers uh, to show you a notification. So this is the notification with the current conditions, including forecast. It is not dismissible. I cannot swipe it away. Um, and I can tap on it to bring up the more detailed forecast information. Just wanted to show a couple of the other uh, lesser used uh, features that we've added. Um, firstly, if we go into Cronus, you'll notice that we now have the ability to backup and restore widgets. So going into the backup and restore, you can either backup just the selected widget. You'll notice that the Cronus Flex widget is currently my selected widget, and I can backup that one widget. Uh, once I've backed it up, I am able to restore the widget uh, settings from that backup file. Um, or we can choose to backup all our widgets. And that will back up uh, every single widget that you have configured on your system. Uh, once you've done that, if you open up a widget with a specific that matches a specific type, so for example, if I go to my news, you'll notice that all the backup files uh, that are compatible with this particular widget type is available to select, uh, and you can choose which one you want to restore to your phone. And also clear up all the widgets that you have backed up just in order uh, to ensure that the device is nice and clean. That removes the backup files from the device. In the About Corona section, we've added the change log. And this will give you a list of all the changes we've made to the application since it released on the Play Store around version 2. And uh, we'll keep this updated every time we bring out a new release. So if you don't see the log on the Play Store itself, you can always come into Cronus and look at the changes and features that we've added to the application.